Okay, so having faith in tough times. Uh, it's a continuation of me sharing my testimony and my mental health uh, recovery. So I wrote this down today after going to the gym. It, it helps me to, to tell this story more accurately. Uh, as I made a promise when I was in um, the Gordon Hospital in 2017, I made a vow um, and I prayed and I said to God, I said to, I said to God, if you, if you help me to come back, get me well again, I'll share my story no matter how scared or nervous I am. Uh, it's not about me. So uh, that was my promise and that's what I continue to do. Right, so um, I start I start off by writing here. I always feel, feel like this. Uh, I don't really know what to say or I don't know what to tell you other than to share my story with you. So when I had a mental health breakdown in 2017 and I was sent to the Gordon Hospital, which is a psychiatric hospital or a mental health hospital, and I, I was terrified and, and I felt um, so afraid and I felt so hopeless. I didn't really understand what was happening to me. I didn't understand why I was there. I was thinking, I, I shouldn't be here. You know, these people are, are not well. I, I, I shouldn't be here. They've made a mistake. So I didn't understand what was happening to me. And my anxiety was constantly, it was constantly there. And it, it wouldn't go away no matter how much I tried to get rid of it or fight it off. I, I felt in constant danger. And I want to recite this today. This is really, I was really pleased to understand this. There's anxiety, which everyone has anxiety, right? There's a normal, healthy amount of anxiety that we all deal with. It's part of being human, part of living. And that's normal. It's, it's, nothing to, it's nothing abnormal. But then there's, you know, psychosis, mental illness, which is what I had, a psychotic episode, where it's an unbearable amount of anxiety that I wouldn't wish on anyone. I don't have any enemies, but I wouldn't wish it on anybody having gone through it. It's torture, you know, you, you, that's how it feels. That's how, that's how people feel I went through it. You feel like you're being tortured whilst you're alive and there's, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, so I was constantly alert because um, I was paranoid and I had this, um, I had a fear that someone was going to attack me or something bad was gonna to happen to me. The worst intrusive thought that I had through my mental health problems was um, I couldn't trust anybody and I needed to hide myself from people. And that, what that really was is I needed to hide the mental illness that I was suffering. Yeah, it, it, it felt like um, demons were coming to get me. That's how frightened I was. It felt like a, you know an evil force. That's what I felt. I, at my worst, I even believed that my own family were against me, apart from my brother. Um, now, obviously, that wasn't true, but that's part of the illness when you're not well. You, you, think, you think everyone's against you. Everyone's um, going to try and harm you. It's, it's, it's horrible. But there is hope. Listen up. Yes, I've gone to say this is part of the mental illness. It lies to you. It manipulates you into believing its lies. It also threatens you, or it threatened me with punishment if you tell anyone about your thoughts, you know, what's going on. So yeah, I was paranoid constantly. The intrusive thoughts wouldn't stop taunting me. I was exhausted, but I couldn't relax. I was confused and I was desperate to escape from the hospital because I didn't want to be there and I didn't want to take the medication. I was worried that they were going to force me to take medication. I was always against medication. I didn't trust anybody. I felt weak. Um, I didn't want anyone to hurt me. I just wanted peace from my intrusive force and I felt depressed and extremely lonely. I thought my life was over on day one when they sent me to the little cell there. I experienced a feeling of dread which rose from the pit of my stomach all the way through my body and I was petrified. And the feeling confirmed to me that my life was over and I thought I'd done something, you know, I thought I'd done something wrong, it's my fault, but I honestly thought my life's over. Over in a sense of over, never gonna get well again, they're never gonna let me out. And it went even deeper than that. It re really was, um, it really was a feeling of being left, abandoned. It was over, you know, like I'm, I'm dying, I'm, I'm finished. That's how I felt. So after experiencing that, I just thought my instincts took over and um, no one told me to do this. It wasn't intellectual for sure. 
I had to get a copy of the Bible. I got up from my bed. I opened the door. I went to the reception. And I asked him for a copy of the Bible. I remember, my, I remember what was going through my head. I was worried that they were going to say, we don't have a copy. I was really frightened. And they did. The guy was lovely. They gave me a copy of the King James's Bible. So I started, um, I started praying. And I, I begged God to help me and not leave me die in this place alone. Help me to recover. And I just wanted my life back. So the King, the King James's Bible, I think, is a simplified version. And I'd never... I haven't read the Bible for years, you know, I went to school, you know, we uh, went to church, sang, I knew some of the prayers, but never really read it because I was always frightened of reading it, it always intimidated me, you know, the literature was really, um, can't find the right word, but I was frightened of it, so I avoided it, but I prayed when I was younger, and I'll get back to that in a second, so, yeah, so, you know, um, I was dying inside, I knew I was dying, I couldn't do anything. I was in agony, both mentally and emotionally. I remember my jaw was killing me. My jaw was aching from all the stress and the anxiety and the torment. My body was in pain. And I remember I couldn't speak to people. I, could, I couldn't speak to people without feeling pain and discomfort. And I, I remember actually I couldn't look people in the eye. It used to be painful. And I was just worried about making people feel uncomfortable. I just felt strange, off. Um, it's the closest thing that I've ever experienced to death while still being alive. I knew I was dying and I couldn't do anything about it other than to pray and seek God and just couldn't do nothing. Could, uh, powerless. So I read chapters on the Bible on fear, anxiety and peace. I read everything that I could to overcome the mental and emotional torment. Um, people ask me how do you feel and uh, how did I feel at the time and I felt possessed. Honestly, that's the best way I could describe I could describe it. Possessed with intrusive thoughts, anxiety, voices. Horrible to begin with. So the words in the Bible gave me comfort and they gave me hope that things were going to get better. I never ever thought I'd be writing this because although I prided myself on being a Christian growing up and a believer in Jesus Christ, I was the truth was I wasn't living it, nor was I even trying to live it. So I ended up going down a very dark path in my life. Um, I come to the understanding, this is, you know, a lot of processing in hospital and after, not just the six weeks in hospital, but, you know, it's been a six year um, journey and transition. Um, although I was a, a good person growing up, I had a good, always had a good heart, um, but I was selfish later on, especially with the success and some of the fame that I achieved and things, I was very selfish. And although people, you know, would say I was nice and treated people well, I knew that I, I didn't treat people kindly. And, and later on, this broke my heart and it made me feel deeply ashamed of, of my behaviour. Although I'd done a lot of good in my life at times, I couldn't deny the unkind things that I'd done in my past. And some of those things um, um, were affecting me, you know, um, amongst many other things with a mental illness. I come to the understanding, it was, it was shocking and heartbreaking, but I come to the understanding that I didn't like myself, even with all the money that I made, all of the women that I dated, some of the fame I had. I felt like a failure. I felt like I let everybody down, my family down. I felt like I let God down. I let myself down. Um, I was a poor example to people who looked up to me. I was holding on to a lot of hate and anger from, from the bullying that I underwent growing up, which was, obviously wasn't my fault. And I was still ashamed of who I was deep down. And I, I honestly felt that people didn't really know the real me. Obviously, my family, my close friends, you know, um, my, the best girlfriend that I had by that time, we, we had separated. Uh, she did. And obviously, you know, a few clients here and there. But generally, that's how I felt. And that was true. Um, I even made up, you know, a made up name, Johnny Berber, that wasn't even my real name, you know, I was ashamed of my real name, which is Jonathan O'Halloran, which I'm really proud of now, you know, that's, that's my real name. This was all unconscious, I, I didn't realise it at the time, of course, you don't know these things until you learn them. Um, I was struggling for many years despite achieving global success. I knew that I was, I was being broken down in hospital and I could no longer run and hide anymore because there was nowhere to run and hide to. A part of me was relieved, if I'm honest, 
because I was tired of trying to be someone I wasn't. I wanted to return back to the person that I was when I was younger, uh, the happy, kind, um, peaceful, uh, you know, Jonathan that I, that I once was, that I lost. So, um, I was in denial at first. Um, before 2017, um, my family could see that I was unwell. Uh, many of you probably could. Some of you did on, online. I didn't know it, obviously. I was in denial. I wasn't well. So I wouldn't admit it for a while, even in hospital. But after reading the Bible and having the experience, which I'm going to touch on in a second, I said it in my last testimony, I finally admitted that I wasn't mentally well. I needed all the help that I could get, and that's when I felt relieved. Oh, what a relief to surrender. Um, I decided that I was going to take the medication. What I liked was no one forced me. They didn't force me in there, which I really appreciated because I wouldn't have liked that. And I decided that I wanted to take it. I needed it. I couldn't do it. My anxiety was so um, high, so it calmed me down. I got that. Um, I decided to take it after reading the Bible. So, um, where is it? So when I was praying to God, one of the things that I prayed for amongst my recovery, I prayed that good people would help me and that trust was a big deal for me. That was probably the most dominating factor of all my anxieties. I, wanted, I was paranoid of people. I didn't trust myself either. So I prayed to God that, you know, good people would be around me, that I could trust, that weren't going to harm me or, you know, judge me or basically harm me in, in any sort of spiritual, psychological way. And... And I was lucky, that's what happened. Um, really good people helped me in hospital, professionals. My support worker I spoke about in the last video, I'm not gonna say his name just in case. He's just unbelievable, I'll get to that in a second. So, um, yeah, when I read the Bible, um, I heard um, God I don't know, God, Jesus, I don't know, both, um, tell me, uh, give up fighting, Jonathan. And it wasn't a voice, it wasn't an intrusive thought, it wasn't a voice like what I'm saying now, but it was an impression, and I understood it. It's, it's crazy. In the midst of being unwell and sick and paranoid and having all these voices that were not mine, I knew what that meant, and that fixed everything for me in, in hospital. I'll get to that in a second. So it told me to stop fighting, give up because that's what I was doing and, and it, wasn't make, it was making me sick trying to hide it and resist and fight and, and beating myself up and hating myself and blaming myself and being angry and paranoid. And it was, uh, it was just, oh man, I can't even put it into words. So um, it was an intrusive thought. Um, it was an impression that spoke to me and I knew, that, I knew from that point when I was reading the Bible, I knew that things were going to get better for me, but I knew, I knew that the road back to recovery wasn't going to be easy, nor was it going to be quick. And I accepted that. I accepted that. And part of the praying and that impression that I got, which said, give up fighting and not give up as in give up, but, you know, leave it to God. Let God take care of it. I'm powerless to, you know, I couldn't make, how can I make myself recover and get the help? And I had that feeling that I can trust, I'm not going to be harmed in hospital because I was paranoid. You know, you hear all sorts of things and I was always worried about that and that didn't happen. I was protected the whole time. Good people helped me. So, um, yeah, i um, gone on to say here, I was 34 and although I prided myself on a tough guy, whatever that means, you know, growing up on the streets in a, from a council estate, I got bullied and had a lot of street fights growing up. I'm not proud of that, but my sort of, my identity, my arrogance used to feel like I'm, I'm a tough guy. And, I, you know, I did some boxing, which I'm proud of. Um, but when I was in hospital, age 34, that all went out the window because I was crying and begging for help. And I was so vulnerable, you can't even imagine to begin how vulnerable I was unless you've experienced the mental health problems that I have. Tyson Fury understands because he's been through the same experience I have. Tyson Fury inspired me on my journey. I always appreciate Tyson Fury. I followed Tyson Fury right from the start of his career. I've seen him fight live, that's another story. So Tyson Fury inspired me, made me feel not ashamed of my mental health issues 
but to speak about them and help others and now I'm not ashamed of it at all. It's, this is like a joy for me to speak about it, help other people. Um, I've gone on to say here, I like, I like the person I am now. Um, despite this being a very difficult path for me, but nonetheless, it's worth it to follow my heart and to help other people that are suffering with anxiety, mental health by sharing my story, my testimony. I want to say this to anybody, men and women, um, who are struggling with mental health problems or anxiety, anything like I was going through. You're not alone, believe me. Let me remind you um, that there is hope and there was hope for me, so there'll be hope for you. And I've made a point of saying, one of my biggest anxieties has been ongoing. I think this happened in my old life when I was famous and people looking up to me. I don't want this. My biggest anxiety is that people think that I'm better than them and I'm not better than anybody. And I don't want to be better than anyone. I know that's not true. And it's important that people know that because a lot of times people don't believe that. They see someone online who's successful, broke down, or talks about it, and they feel less, you're not less, I'm not better than anyone. And I'm, I'm, that's one of my biggest um, successes, to actually know that and feel that in my heart. And that's God. I, that, I don't even feel worthy to say that. That's been the change. That's what's helped me to like the person I am and keep growing. So uh, Jesus Christ and my faith in Christ has changed me and I'm still a work in progress. This has been six years ongoing. And um, so let me continue on that. So I don't really know what to say. I don't really have any words other than what I've said. But I know what people are going through. They can get through it. So I got through it. Tyson Fury got through it. You can get through it. I know how it feels. I tried to remind myself because obviously I'm healed now, I'm fixed. Now, of course, I still have anxiety. I have anxiety on a daily basis like we all do. That's normal anxiety. The anxiety that I had, the pain, it's all gone. The thoughts, the intrusive thoughts, the voices, the psychotic episode, it's all gone. I'm off medication and I want, I want people to not feel ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I took medication for two years. People have been asking me. It's part of my testimony and my promise to share it, break the stigma. So I'm off medication. I'm paying my taxes, which feels amazing. I'm working, I'm running a business. I've changed my whole life. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't really know what to say other than thank you, I'm grateful. And um, there's a lot more to share. So I need to continue to share it through these videos, but um, I'm, I'm still I'm still in shock. I'm still in shock at, at coming back. I, I I don't really understand, but I do understand this. I'm overwhelmed with gratitude and joy. And the last couple of weeks, for some reason, um, I like Victoria. I was staying in a hospital near Victoria, the Gordon Hospital. I've walked down there, and went outside, and I've just had to go back there to appreciate where I am now. Um, so that's my story, and I'm going to keep sharing it as much as I can to follow my heart. And it's an um, absolute pleasure for me to share it. You can come back. So the daily discipline routine that I put out, that was part of my recovery. I, I never would have learned all this stuff if it wasn't for the mental health breakdown. So although I wouldn't want anybody to go through what I went through, it's agony, but I'm glad I went through it because it's changed my heart, it's changed my life, you know, and I've had some of the best experiences after 2017, I can't even explain. I, I need hours to explain the journey, six years, relationships, friendships, conversations. My life has been blessed and I want to share more of this as well. I, I know the fears that you're going through. I've been from, I'll call them out. When I was in hospital at my worst, everything comes at you. It's like, I'm never going to have any money again. I'm going to be homeless. No one's going to like me. I'm never going to have a relationship. No one's going to love me. It's a horrible, horrible, terrifying, and the worst for it is I'm never going to get well again. Because when you're unwell, I actually didn't care about money. You know, I lost all my money. You, you just, you just want to be peaceful again. You just want to feel human. You're just being tortured. You just want the pain to stop, and the voices, and the constant threat of danger. And you just want to be able to trust people again, people that you love. And to be at that point, I can only say it's, it's a miracle. But I did believe it when I read the Bible in hospital. I, 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 I just, it was, I can't put it down to me. I couldn't, I, I couldn't do it on my own. I, wouldn't, I wasn't strong enough to do it as strong as I thought I was. And, you know, 
to popular belief, I'm a very strong person in the eyes of a lot of people, and I prided myself on that, but I wasn't strong enough, I couldn't do it. Um, boxing and success and all these things, and many brave acts I did throughout my life, which were quite brave, wasn't enough, the fear was too strong, the illness was too strong, so I couldn't do it without good people and faith. So anyone can do it, anyone can come back. And it's made me realize that so many people that I've grown up with that I love, like really good people have become mentally unwell. People that you just wouldn't expect. So um, I know that a lot of you won't do it and I'm fine if you do. But anyone out there who is nasty and judges people that are mentally unwell, have got a mental illness. I mean, I don't feel, I don't even feel any anger, but all I could say is I have to pray for you because that, I, you've got to forgive people because that could happen to anybody anybody anyone who's normal can have a breakdown it's not just this like label and i don't make mental illness an identity and, I, and i've overcome it so anyone can do it it's not an identity anxiety psychosis mental illness a breakdown it's not an identity if you don't want it to be it wasn't who i was my identity personally my identity is in jesus christ it's not in labels or names or or an anxiety so you can come back and you know it's crazy because years ago i'd hear people sharing testimonies and i'd always be interested but you know somewhere in me i'd always be thinking oh is that did that is that really real are they just saying that are they just you know announcing god or some kind of supernatural experience and now because i've gone for it i know that they're not and who's to say what anybody's experience is is is, is true or not so i don't need to convince people uh, of god or what's real that's it's not really what my that's not what it's about, but all I need to is share my story, and that was my promise. And it, let's see, I hope it does good, because it's done good for me, at least I can do, and it's me also having gratitude. So I'm a better person, I'm stronger than I've ever been, healthier. I never thought I'd work again, I've changed everything. I changed my teaching. Um, I actually was working with a client yesterday, and I didn't realize for a while I was homeless. In hospital, I was homeless. I had no home. Obviously, I could go to my parents, but it's overcrowded. I couldn't live there. So there was a period where I had no home. And praying, this man helped me. He was a support worker, but he treated me unbelievably. He didn't treat me like a sick patient. He helped me to get a, a temporary accommodation. He got me on benefits when I couldn't work. I had no money, no savings. Friends helped me. A friend helped me out of money. So the good... I couldn't believe the good that come to the rescue. Of course, a lot of people didn't care because that's the nature of some people, which is fine, expect that. Some people didn't know. My family were unbelievable. My mum and dad, everybody, I got help. So there are good people out there. And when you're mentally unwell, that's one of the deep fears. It's can't trust people. You're scared. Think that people are going to harm you and think there's no good out. There's always good people out there. It's always good people out there. If there wasn't, I wouldn't, wouldn't have come back. I wouldn't be sharing this testimony and story. I wouldn't be so much happier. I'm more happier now than I've ever been. But this has been, a, as you, a lot of you can see, it's taken me, I'm still changing, you know, but from where I was, there is a completion. You know, I, I well, I didn't do it, but I, with faith and strength and my own effort, and that's how I was able to lose over 40 pounds over the six years, off medication, back to work, because I could have never worked again. You know, I was even encouraged to do that, which was nice, but I didn't want to do that. I could have stayed on benefits, got my rent paid, and just, you know, sat around and, you know, I wouldn't judge anyone for doing that. That's fine if they want to do that. But I did that for a while, but I wanted to come back and change my life around. And now I'm loving, loving what I do. I love my, you know, the new teaching that I'm doing, which is helping people. Um, but this is separate to my business. This is, um, this is putting all this out for free to help people. Cause I want people that have been through what I've been through. I want them to have the opportunity that I got. I want them to be able to make as much money as they want, being a good person. I want them to be happy and well, mentally well, fit, good relationship with their family and friends. I, I, want, I want them to have all the things that I had. Um, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good me having, getting all this help. And I've had a lot of friends in my life growing up around my area that never recovered. They've, they're ill for the rest of their life. And that's, um, deeply deeply saddens me but it motivates me uh, to give back and that was my promise and i've kept my promise you know that's how my dad brought me up to be a man of my word try my best and i've kept my promise and it's you know i was you know quite scary to talk about these things this is a really personal deep stuff but 
it's not about me, it's about me helping other people. And, and I always go back to how I felt. I always ask myself, if I had a son, which I don't, or a daughter, how would I feel if they were mentally unwell in hospital on their own struggling, or my friend, or anybody? I, could, I couldn't do that to I couldn't do that to other human beings. It's not right. So it's the least I can do. And the more we speak about it, the better we get. And that's a huge part of recovery is communication. That's probably the best advice I can give. And then from there, things can get better. You know, the exercising, the training, the dieting. But you know, you've got to take one day at a time. And you need help. You need help. When I was in hospital. It wasn't just men as well, that's why I'm sharing um, to help men and women, because it was both, both in hospital, you know. And as I said, when I was in hospital, they said, you know, Jonathan, we have millionaires coming here, all sorts of people. It's got nothing to do with money or what if someone's famous or not. It, 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 you've seen that with Tyson Fury, he said it himself. So there's hope. There's, there, there is real hope. You can come back. And believe me, there's so many good people. And there are people you can trust. Of course, you can't trust everyone. That's common sense, but you don't need to trust everyone. You can trust, you learn to trust yourself, trust good people. And that's what I learned. And when I recovered, the paranoia went and um, never felt better in my life. Never felt better in my life. And, you know, people can see the change in me and that gives me a great feeling that will give them hope because sometimes people de do need to see evidence of someone's positive change and um, people... Um, yeah, all I can say is thank God it's, it's a miracle, so anyone can do it, that's my testimony. I'm going to continue sharing it, there's, there's a lot more to get through when I come out of hospital and friendships I had, many more things to share, but I think that's, that's as much as I can share now, alright? Appreciate it, speak to you soon.